Welcome to the Admi Gamers channel. As always, if you'd like to skip to the attribute section, then click on the link. Otherwise, wait a few seconds and I'll start off with the mercenaries to hire. That being in the beginning of the game or later on. When you start the game, you firstly choose normal or hard. In accordance to that, you get your money, that being 40,000 or 25. Let's presume you start a normal game and have 40,000 to start with. And now you need to select and hire your mercenaries. As you can see, there's a large choice of mercenaries you can choose from. Don't expect that they will all join you from the beginning. Some will join and some won't, as they either think you're too inexperienced or just have better things to do. No, not really. You just still suck and have no respect or name. Now, the important thing is not only to look at the skills and attributes of your mercenary, but also what each mercenary has a specialization in, in regards to his weapon of choice or skill of choice. The key thing to focus on in the beginning is to be able to hire a mercenary that has a high mechanical skill, enough to be able to use a toolkit, which is the best repairing item in the game, as repairing guns that are heavily damaged are your main source of income, and also to be able to use the weapons yourself. So, the first thing to do is you need to jump to the toolkit and items tab. Here you'll see that you need 50 points to use the toolkit. And of course, you can also see what is the requisite to use other items as well. Now, let's jump back to the AIM list. So, we need somebody who is a good shot, that being around 70 marksmanship, and also have a minimum of 50 mechanical, so we can use the toolkit once you get it. If you start with Barry and go down the mechanical skills section, the first person you will hit is Gus. Well, Gus just costs a fortune. He's one of the last mercenaries you'll get, if you'll ever get him, so he's out of the question. So, let's keep going. Next, you go to Len who got 54 mechanical and 73 marksmanship, a little expensive at 28k. So let's keep going, then you got magic, nails and so on. Not all will join you, as mentioned. Also, you need to be able to fit in your budget a repair guy slash weapons guy. And of course, preferably a healing person as well. So the best solution, especially if you're just starting, is to take Wolf. His mechanical is 65, his marksmanship is 60. You may be saying, wait, his marksmanship is lower than his mechanical, what good will that do? You need to also consider his dexterity, which affects marksmanship as well. So you could say he is a good shot, maybe not the best, but a good one at that. And when it comes down to shooting with a shotgun, I believe he is the best. As you can see, he has the shotgun expert and gunslinger trait as well. Meaning, he is better and he has faster reaction times with the shotgun, and with guns in general. Both of which improve his firing. And of course, his 65 mechanical is more than enough to use the 50 skill points required for the toolkit. Now here's the interesting part. Most of you disregard that some mercenaries like to work with others more, or have a thing for each other. So, if we jump to the mercenaries likes and dislikes tab, you will see, if you find Wolf, that he likes Fox and Lynx. So if you hired Fox or Lynx, his morale will increase, and be very good instead of good. You ask why? Well, if you really want to get the most out of your mercenaries' morale, is important, as it also improves their stats and overall performance, maybe up to 15%. And coincidentally, we are also looking for a team medic. So if we look at Fox and Lynx, Lynx has very low medical skills, as well as being too expensive. And also we just can't afford him, especially since we just started. But Fox, on the other hand, has very high medical at 72. Okay, she may be really bad at guns with a 46 marksmanship, even though her dexterity is high at 83. It still wouldn't make Fox a great shot. Maybe improve the marksmanship overall, but not really such a big difference. But still, I believe the requisite for the large medikit is 80. So two level ups with Fox would allow me to add skill points required to use that. And of course, she will be able to use all the other medical items, because the second highest requisite is 50 in medical. Now, let me go just a little bit more into the likes and dislikes section. So again, for example, if I've hired Fox, because she has a great medical skill, and then I'll think of hiring Steroid. From Steroid's side, there isn't a problem, but Fox doesn't like him and furthermore hates him. So firstly, you would have a problem hiring Fox or Steroid, if either one was in your team already. But if you did manage to somehow get Fox and Steroid into the same team, your morale would probably be poor, if not even worse. Another example. If I would get Wolf, Fox and Meltdown in my team, this covers the three main skills. I need a main new tank, since Wolf is good, but I need somebody who really kicks ass outdoors, a rifle expert preferably. So I'll look into the traits, and look for a rifle expert. So I could choose maybe Reaper, 
who doesn't like Shadow, which is fine, I don't have Shadow in my team anyways. Buzz, who dislikes and hates Lynx, again not an issue, don't have him in my team. Gus, well too damn expensive, I can't get him, so never mind. Ivan, who seems good, likes Igor and Grunty, or Raider, who likes Raven, and Raven herself doesn't hate or dislike anybody, so getting Raider is a good future investment, as I can later get Raven as my sniper, and have another morale boost. Well, you sort of get the idea. After you choose, then you need to see how much they cost, and then you need to see if they'll even join you in the first place, so always have a plan B. So now we have hired Wolf and Fox, costing you a total of 21,000, still leaving you 19 left. A good thing to keep in mind, no need to spend the money on lower level mercs, even when you're in the game. Better wait up and save, and get somebody of a higher class. Also, don't expect that each mercenary should be able to do everything, meaning he shouldn't heal, place explosives, and be a grain shot, all at the same time. This is just not happening. There's a level cap of 10, and as such you need to place your skill points wisely. You will need three types of mercenaries in your game. You need group medic to take care of all the healing. You'll also need a repair guy and of course an explosive expert. Now in the beginning don't expect to get all of them. Stick with group medic and repair guy. Prioritize in hiring the repair guy, that being with 50 and mechanical. In this case, since I started with wolf and fox, it's obvious I'll not be using fox as the main tank. But it doesn't mean I won't have her shoot at all. She can provide cover fire and backup fire as well. You need to specialize your mercenaries as you go along, so in the beginning Wolf will be the tank slash repair guy. As he levels, he'll be very good at tanking, but still he will excel in using a shotgun, as he is a shotgun expert. So later on, after I get the team explosives guy, I can hire somebody who specializes in a rifle, and use him as a main tank outdoors, and Wolf just to clean out the houses themselves, indoor fighting. The outdoor tank doesn't need to do anything else, since I have the team medic, who covers obviously healing my team, and also I have my team repair guy, that being Wolf. And again I have my explosive expert. It means I have the three skills covered, that are needed in the whole game. You need somebody to be able to heal and use the largest medikit. You need somebody to repair, and of course you need somebody to blow holes in walls, to get to certain locations, or later on defuse mines. Also, keep in mind you can always hire a better mercenary that has the ability to cover two or even three main skills that are required. You can then use the better mercenaries to be your main tank team. Now, in regards to skill point distribution, if you open up your mercenaries page, you will see you have the experience section here. It says 4,925 out of 7,000. Once I reach 7,000, the mercenary will level up again. Uh, in regards to steroid, he leveled up now. As you can see, I have the plus signs all his attributes and skills, so I can choose to level up either his attributes or skills. It's good to pay attention is that you have to confirm the skill once you place it. So for example, if I decide to level up his agility, and I don't confirm it with a tick and I just close it, it might be removed, but if I go back to his skill points, they won't actually be added, even though the notification here was gone. So it's always good to confirm after you place the skill points in the desired attribute or skill tree. Now in regards to where to put the actual skill points you get, you gain obviously 7 every time you level up. There's a cap level of 10, so pay attention. There's no point in actually increasing, I believe, hold on, where is it, I think it's uh, intelligence. Yes, there's no real point in increasing your intelligence, because it also says it determines how fast the character gains experience. Uh, by the time you're halfway through the game, you have substantially leveled up, and before you even reach the end, you're in level 10 which is the maximum level. So it's really a waste of points to put any skill points in intelligence, especially if you're just trying to gain experience. Don't put points in intelligence to gain experience. I might understand you're putting it in since you're using medical checks or whatever hell determines how fast. Used for medical checks and determines how fast character gains experience. So forget about using it for character gaining experience. And if you're using it for medical, then I understand. I guess it improves medical as well. You have to also understand, attributes, in general, will always affect skills. It means if I increase an attribute, it will always affect either one or more than one skill. For example, agility, it says determines maximum stamina and how fast the merc can move and react to given to orders. Okay, dexterity, used for aiming, repairing weapons and using explosives. So, at the same time, explosives is here. At the same time, I have mechanical as well. 
So dexterity improves my explosives, improves my aiming, which is marksmanship in a way as well, and improves my repairing, which is mechanical. So it means dexterity improves explosives, marksmanship, and mechanical. Maybe it doesn't improve the actual skill itself, but it improves on the skills. So for example, if I have skill, uh, explosive skill of 63, and I want to further improve the skill, I can also add into the attribute of dexterity. I presume, because we don't still have access to the EXE file, that obviously the skill itself has a higher, let's say, percentage or a higher effect. So obviously if you increase the actual single skill which specifies that particular skill, obviously the effect is greater. So if you want to improve marksmanship, you can only increase marksmanship and obviously he'll shoot better. But in turn, it's, well I would recommend you increase sometimes the actual attributes themselves. Because the attribute itself won't only increase marksmanship, but it'll increase the explosive chance and the mechanical chance, since dexterity improves these as well. So in this circumstance, let's say I have steroid here. He's a level 5. I know he's not going to be healing. He's not going to be doing practically anything. All, the only thing he's going to be doing is crowbarring his way into stuff and shooting. So his strength, where's his strength? is 97. So there's no point in leveling that up. And then... I have his mechanical which is 76. I don't really need to level up the mechanical anymore. Technically I only need 50. Yeah. So there's no point in leveling that up. So what I could do, since I know he's sort of a bad shot, I could level up his dexterity or marksmanship. I've been leveling up his dexterity for quite a while now. Now it's 67, which is sort of reasonable. What I could do now is level up his marksmanship. Since I know marksmanship directly affects here, it says determines how well a merc can aim a gun and how likely he is to shoot or he or she is to hit or shoot the target. So, before I'd be leveling up dexterity because it was really bad. Now I, I think it's sort of an average range. So in this circumstance, I need him to shoot better since he is still my main, well not really, he's the, the cover fire or the, the, the backup for my main tank who's raider now. So I'm gonna improve the seven skill points on to steroid and accept it. Now, if I level again, obviously I'm not gonna be putting it on anything else. I'm gonna put it again on marksmanship. You know, because I don't use him for anything else. I'm not going to use him. Oh, the only thing I'm going to use him for crowbarring. And his crowbar is so high because crowbar also is determined by strength. And his strength is so ridiculously high. I really don't need increased strength itself. The mechanical, I'm not, I don't need to increase because I have the minimum requirement of 50 to repair. You need 50 to use the toolkit. Here it even says re required 50 mechanical. So there's no real need to use the mechanical. I'm satisfied with the amount it repairs. I guess if I improve it, it will repair more per charge, but I'm sort of happy with it. Both cases, if I max out marksmanship, which I have 5 more levels to go, it means I have 35 points, it means I can't even max it out, no wait, 7, yeah, I have 35 points, it means I can get marksmanship to a maximum of 95, you know, which I think is, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it that way. What I would do is maybe give 2 more levels to marksmanship, let's say, I don't know, it would be around 84. Yeah, and then the other two I'd put into dexterity. Since dexterity not only improves marksmanship, but as well as my mechanical. You understand me there? So like this I improve in at the same time another skill by using an attribute. Okay? Now let's jump to somebody else. For example, Ira. Okay? Ira is an in-game merc that you get. In general, she sort of sucks. Okay, perception is high. Okay, it means she can hear quite far, you know, it extends, what, well, extends area within the guard range. Okay, then you have the intelligence, which is used for medical and getting experience, which we said is a waste. And then you have strength, strength of course increases your maximum health and damage dealt by melee attacks. And of course, uh, is more likely to help you with forcing doors open, that's what I said with steroid, with the crowbar. And again, it helps you to carry more stuff. So if, if you're having a problem by being overweight all the time, because you get that tiny sign here when you're overweight. Yeah, hold on, we can sort of maybe try it out. The toolkits are the heaviest. Let's give her toolkits, more toolkits. Okay. So. Yeah. You see here you have the sign, carry weight exceeded. So, if I'm using a mercenary that can't carry much, or you're sick and tired of the mercenary not being able to carry much, you can also increase strength, you know. 
In general, it's always recommended to increase the attributes to improve the skill. But unless you're specializing in a skill, obviously increasing the skill itself will substantially give you a higher boost, I presume, again, I can't like say for sure, a higher boost than using an attribute. Since attributes uh, maybe affects a bunch of them, but since the skill is specialized, so I presume the actual effect of leveling up or increasing a skill should be higher. Okay, now Ira. If Ira would level up, let's just say she hits level 3 now. What skills or where would I put the skills? Well, Ira in general is useless. I'm not using her for anything. The only thing I'm using her is to carry my stuff. So the only thing what I would probably level up in Ira would be is let's take her stuff is high. The only thing I level up would probably be strength. So I could store more stuff on her while I drag her around. Now let's jump to MD. MD. In case MD would level up, as you can see, his agility, dexterity, all this stuff is good. Intelligence, he's smart as hell, which is excellent because it helps in my medical. Okay, and my medical is also very high, so that's excellent as well. And my dexterity is sort of decent as well. So, in general, he's good. The only problem that MD has, or had, was his marksmanship was low, which I've been improving over a few levels. So, if MD levels up, I don't need to level medical since I have the minimum prerequisite of 80 to use my large medic. So he's now my, my team medic, MD. So next time he levels up, I'm gonna put all the skills into marksmanship, because I need him to be a better shooter. I don't want to use him only for medic. I want, to, I want him to also get into action, get into the action. So I'm gonna increase all my dexterity for like maybe one level dexterity and one level, sorry, dexterity and one level marksmanship. And maybe the next level only marksmanship. I still have five levels to go. So with MD, I'm done doing medical. All I want him to do is be a good shot now. So, only thing that's going for him is dexterity and marksmanship from now. Okay? Let's go to somebody else. Meltdown. Meltdown is my explosive expert. So, as you can see, agility, dexterity, strength, intelligence, perception, the usual. Explosives is 60. Now, I believe to use the remote uh, detonator with the remote control, not the timer, I think you need 75 or 70. Maybe 75, but I have to check the tables for that. But you get the idea. So, to truly use Meltdown, if I really wanted to use the last item prerequisite, I could continue leveling up Explosives to 60. But to be honest, I'm happy with the timer. I don't really need the, 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 the remote control detonator so much. And it's also a waste of, let's say, 3 level ups, because 2 level ups will get me only to uh, 74. I need maybe 75, I believe, unless it's 70. But in case of 75, I'll need three level ups to be able to use just the remote control detonator. The only advantage of that is I can say when the, when the bomb blows up on the wall or when I want to blow up uh, the, the, the actual C4. You know, which isn't really such a big deal. I think it's a waste of three levels just to use the C4 remote detonator. So what I'm going to do now is make her into more of, again, a, a combat person. Now, she is very good in machine guns. She's good in being a loner, she wants to be alone, and she's an expert in explosives. So what I could do is maybe camp her, leave her camping in Cambria, and she'll be taking care of the actual waves, or the, the, the patrols that I'll be passing by. So what I'm gonna do now is, if she leveled up, her dexterity is very high, so there's no need to deal with that. Her strength is, again, substantially high. Intelligence extremely high, so the only thing that's missing is marksmanship. Explosives are gonna keep it the same. As long as she can deal with the timer, I'm gonna keep it the same. Marksmanship is 68. So all I'm going to be doing now, every time she levels up, is putting all the skill points into marksmanship. Once marksmanship is leveled up to 100, then I'll be putting points into dexterity. Why? Because dexterity will improve again my marksmanship, and at the same time, it'll improve my mechanical. Okay? And my explosives. So dexterity again will improve all these three, but I need her to be a better shot. Explosives is so far done. I don't need it more. But since I'm done with marksmanship, might as well improve all three. So I'm not going to concentrate on skills. I want to get all three. So I'm going to use dexterity, which will really improve the two skills that I want. As the explosives make it better, and marksmanship make her even better since it's maxed out. So that's what I'll be doing with Meltdown from now on. Actually, I changed my mind. I won't use her to camp in Cambria. I'm going to use steroid. Why? Because everybody hates steroid, and he's making my team morale very low. Even though he's very good. The only reason he's good is because Ira's there. Okay, who do we have next? Raider. Raider, I just got him now. So, let's again presume Raider levels up. What do we do with Raider? Raider is my main tank guy. He is excellent in assault rifles. So the only thing I'm going to be doing with him is throwing everything that I have at him in marksmanship. Once I'm done with marksmanship, I'm going to be throwing everything I have into dexterity. That's it. 
that's it. I'm gonna get another guy, let's say, if I'm gonna get a sniper, sniper person, it's the same thing. Let's go into the recruiting, okay? Let's say, by any chance, I would get Reaper, okay? I decided to get Reaper, because he's an assault rifle and a sniper rifle expert. I don't need anybody else. I have already my three main mercs to take care of the three main skills that I need. I have my healing, team healing guy, and I have my main tank, uh -huh. which is right here. Actually, no, that's not one of the three main skills. I have what, my order. healing, team healing guy, third what? is my repair guy, and I have my explosives guy. You always need these three in the team, you know. I need three people to take care of this in the beginning. Later on, you can hire a higher class tier or a higher class mercenary to deal with more of them. For example, whatever, where was he? Shadow. Shadow's medical is low, marksmanship, okay, he's not really pointless. But like, I want to give you another example. Static, explosives, mechanical. So for example, later on, what I could do is I don't need so many people later on in my another team. I could use static to be my repair guy and my main tank guy. The dexterity is high, so what I do is just keep putting in marksmanship. You know, that's what I do if I have static. You know, like this, I know I have a repair guy and I have a main tank guy. So what I could do is then ditch steroids since everybody hates him and put steroid in Cambria and let him camp there. And by that time, steroid will level up decently. And he's sort of okay. Once, once you get him up with some stats, he's okay. You know. So that's what I'll do with him. And I could throw Ira with him, since Ira only carries stuff. And by then I'll have another, like my main group will have another bunch of people. So let's take another example. If I'd be recruiting, or if you'd be recruiting, I don't know. Whatever. For example, Dr. Q. Again, he's a medical guy. Marksmanship sucks. So first of all, stop wasting your points on medical. You don't need him to be medical. What do you want him to be? You need him to shoot. You need him at least to shoot. So again, everything you throw in, you throw in marksmanship. I, his dexterity is high already. You know, again, why I'm saying always try to throw on the skill since you already know what you want is because the skill, I believe, will increase the actual requirement or requisite that you want substantially higher. I, I don't know uh, what they presume now. They say whatever. Let's say dexterity plus marksmanship divided by two and that's what it is. I still presume, let's say, the marksmanship effect is maybe 60 or 70 percent of the, the, the complete formula. You know, this is what I presume, you know, so uh, this is the way I think it is. You know, again, I might be wrong, it all depends on how you guys think of what the actual formula is, but this is what I, what I believe, is that the actual skills have a higher weight in comparison to the attributes, because the attributes affect more skills. It just, it's just logical for me, that's the way I see it. So yeah, it all depends on, on how you form your team, you know, so you need a medical guy, you need a repair guy, and then you need an explosives guy. Later on, you can hire higher level guys, for example, Gus is crazy. I can use him as my medical guy, I can use him as my explosives guy, and I can use him as my repair guy. He can take up all three. So technically, I don't need anybody else in the team. So once I have somebody that covers all three, all I'm gonna take in my team is just rifle experts and sniper experts, because I already have one guy that covers all of them. So there's no need to waste mercenaries to deal with other stuff. I have one guy that takes, that takes care of everything I need, so all my guys in my team are gonna be either Shotgun experts to take care of the indoors. It means Wolf, you know, he's a shotgun expert. You know, hold on, let's go into the recruiting. Where, where's Wolf? Well, here he's hired. He's on his way, I believe. Yeah. So you have Wolf traits, shotgun expert. You know, so I'd probably have two experts in shotguns, you know, or close range combat. You know, like this, I can use these guys to burst into the houses, and then the rest I'd have rifle and snipers just to take care of the outside. You know, this is, let's say, the final. Then I'll split split the team up into two groups. You know, the main team, well, let's say, would consist of Gust, and the other guys would just be snipers and, 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 and assault rifles. And that's it. Then the other team, which would consist of my old team, would just be running around doing small, stupid stuff. You know? So this is how you distribute your, your, your actual skill points. I hope it helped. In general, it's easy. You need, again, I know I'm repeating a lot, you need to split, you need to cover the three main skills. Once you cover the three main skills, you should focus on marksmanship. You know, unless you want to have one person medical and one person explosives. That rarely happens, because a person that's high in medical always has zero explosives. So, majority of the time, if he's a medical guy, if he's a mechanical guy, the explosives is going to suck. So, if he's a medical guy, you're going to focus on marksmanship. If he's a, a mechanical guy, you're going to focus on marksmanship. Like, the secondary is always going to be marksmanship. You know what I mean? If he's healing, he's going to be marksmanship secondary. Once you achieve the prerequisite for healing, you're going to go for marksmanship. Once you achieve the prerequisite for explosives, you're going to go for marksmanship. 
once you achieve the prerequisite for repairing, again you're going to go for marksmanship. Because once you get him to actually do what you want him to do, you need him to be able to shoot, so he's actually useful. You know, so that's really about it. There's nothing really to it. Obviously, once in a while, you know, if like you don't you don't have to always throw it all in. You know, like when when you feel that I don't know that that you know I don't know. For example, MD isn't really carrying his weight because you know you suddenly start piling up more and more stuff. You know, you can always put like two points in, in strength, you know, just just to make him more useful. You know, or, or like some some points in agility, you know, to increase his stamina a bit, you know, or his health again. Actually, his weight strength is his health, yeah. So no, you just you just put his points in, in strength, you know. So that's really about it, and you know that that really covers up on how to distribute your your skill points. Uh, well, hope it helped. As always, happy gaming. Take care, and see you again next time.